Energy industry stakeholders are concerned that ESCOM's new uh, grid connection rules will drive energy investors out of the country. ESCOM announced the new regulations for independent power producers last week to deal with constraints. Allocations are currently made on a first-come, first-served basis, but ESCOM now wants IPPs to prove they can begin construction quickly and add generation capacity before being given grid allocations. Now, ESCOM's General Manager for Operations Enablement, Vilapian Tuli, joins us to elaborate further on this particular matter. Um, Vilapi, thanks for your time. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you, Lian. Good morning to you and to your viewers. So, the, the story is, and, and, and perhaps maybe correct us if we're not understanding it right, is ESCOM wants developers to demonstrate that their projects are shovel-ready in order to be granted allocations. Is, is that now what the ruling is? That is correct, uh, Lian. Uh, maybe if I can take a few minutes just to explain uh, how we ended up here. Over the last year, we had seen an increased uh, demand or request for allocation of capacity on the grid. And this has been driven by various factors. So what that meant is you have an oversubscription uh, for a very limited uh, capacity. Um, the other driving issue was that we had been assessing uh, people that we, they had been allocated capacity, but we had seen that some of the projects were taking time uh, to come onto the grid. Mm. So what that means for a normal citizen is that the power generation that we so much need on the grid is not coming on the grid, you know, in a relatively short space of time. So it's taking longer, there's delays. So that's why we've put these rules in place. It is honestly nothing new. Uh, it's things that we need up front instead of needing them later in the game. Yeah. So, yeah. so if I were to explain to you, for example, previously we had required that you just indicate to us that you have applied for an environmental authorization and would allocate capacity based on GET and other things. But now we need proof that you know you have received environmental authorization because what happens in that case, Leon, is that you get allocated capacity, you apply for these uh, authorizations, then you don't get them or they get delayed. What it means is that there is power, the power is not coming on to the grid, which can help us save uh, the current situation that we are in. Yeah. So one of the the great worries that they're saying is that this is far too risky for them, and um, uh, th that they they might actually just stay away from applying because you're expecting too much of them. It's too costly, and they may not even get the actual work. And that's I think what some of the fears are right now. Yeah. So we've we've looked at that, and that is not correct because what has been asked it's actually what needs to be there in any case. Uh, for you to run a facility like that, you need to have your environmental authorizations, your water use licenses, that's what you require. Either way, you need to have that and you need to invest in getting those on time. Uh, secondly, one of the things that we require is most of these developers, they then sell this power to what we call off-takers. And if you don't have an off-taker, somebody that's going to buy this power from you, uh, chances are, and our experience has shown, that you are not going to develop, you are going to delay until you could have uh, this off-taker that will basically buy the power from you. Mm. So what we require at this point is, yes, you might, have not a, you might not have a full agreement, but at least provide us with head of terms to say that I have a willing off-taker that, you know, will get this from me. The other thing that had been, you know, mentioned in the media is around this uh, uh, guarantee that we require that only comes into play once we have allocated capacity for you. And why is that important is as soon as we allocate capacity for you, we need you to continue driving the project and ensuring that it gets onto the grid. So that's why we need that guarantee. If you don't default, you're meeting your timelines, you get your project to the grid as quickly as possible. Yeah. There is no cost that you really, um, you know, in caring. Yeah. Thank you. So, you know, the problem with this, Philippi, is that this is, have you done an economic assessment of this? I mean, because I think at the end of the day, this is really about costs. And um, as much as people want to do exactly what you're asking of them, you know, there's no guarantee that they're, only, that, that they're actually going to get um, grid access and they're laying out all of this money. So perhaps just back to that, that initial question, have you done an economic impact and access 
for what this will cost them. Yeah. So let me give you a practical situation that we are currently facing as South Africans. Um, there has been capacity that had been allocated uh, to various players in the industry. Uh, that capacity has not been turned into generation on the unit. Uh, if we do calculations on that, probably two stages of low shedding, if this had now been converted to uh, generators on the grid that we are facing. So that is what the impact of that is, you know, and this uh, to also um, um, just uh, to be clear is is not something new uh, for the regulated program uh, in most of the pit windows uh, this is what the minimum requirements are so one of the key reasons or one of the of the push that we are seeing is the fact that we had never required it for the public uh, sorry for the private program so it was just you came you apply you pay to deposit you get capacity allocated but that is not the prudent way of uh, dealing with the matters. Mm. So the impact of that is huge. And as ESCOM, we had to balance uh, what a potential investor needs to spend upfront to also us being relatively assured that that capacity will translate onto the grid as a generation unit, yeah. which helps um, you know, with the economy. Thank you. So the, the, the reality is, and I'm reading a cost estimate here, I mean, to put a number to what you're saying, Initially, they were saying that um, it, it, it developers had to spend about 20%, that's 6 million rand, of the amount before they knew whether they could get a connection. Now, with all of these changes, the money that it's looking like is that a project could cost up to 30 million rand before they even know if this is going to happen. Do you not think this is a bit unreasonable? Yeah. Um one thing about those numbers, I cannot validate uh, those numbers. Um, I've seen them being thrown around, but from our view, um, we we could not really uh, uh, validate what the, where those numbers are coming from. Um, as we indicated, the key what would be your we, what would be your estimate so, if that if these yeah. numbers you don't agree with these numbers, what would you guess? Because I mean, I think they're working on a basis of about. Um, um, it, from 20% it would be 6 million, it's now gone up to 30 million. So perhaps you can give us a bit of a, an, I mean, you've done this, surely you've done the maths. You should know approximately how much this costs. Yes, so this I'm going to answer in the following manner. I'm just going to take the, three, the four things that uh, seem to be new that we've been introduced and I'll just break them down for you just to, to get to where we get on, on the numbers. The first one is the, as we said, the environmental authorization. Uh, initially, we required proof uh, that you've just applied, you don't have environmental authorization. So that normal cost of business, uh, if you have applied, you'd incur those costs and you do all the work that is required to get that environmental authorization. So that cost is there and it falls away. So that needs to be covered uh, probably in what they are mentioning. The second one is uh, we've requested that uh, you have designers appointed uh, because for this project, you need a technical team that assists you in developing this project and they interface with our technical teams. How you structure that and ensuring that they are appointed upfront, uh, it does not have to cost an IPP money. Mm -hmm. uh, you could have those costs incurred once they start doing work, but you can have them appointed upfront. So we did not see that as an additional cost to the uh, uh, to the developers. Then the third one is the head of terms that we require, uh, which you will have with your off taker, the person that is going to buy that power from you. And also from that, uh, if there is cost, is cost for you know lawyers and fees, uh, legal cost that you you know you'd have to pay, uh, just to have that draft contract in place. That mm -hmm. you are going to need in any case as you develop the project, because as I said, somebody needs to buy that power from you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also the, the, the two years. Is this what you're going to speak about now? The two years of yeah, data. Yeah. Yes, I'll, I'll speak to the two years of data. So then the last thing, it was the uh, guarantee uh, that um, is been required. But as we said, that it's when you have certainty, we only require it once we say we're going to allocate capacity for you. The key thing that came around and when we announced these rules, it was the measurement data that we need uh, for solar and for wind. Uh, from an ESCOM point of view, technically, we require that for accuracy of our modeling and ensuring you know, to understand what the power profiles are. Uh, 
Uh, even during our briefing, we got a lot of uh, uh, concerns around what we require. Yeah. And what we have commissioned Leanne is to meet again with the industry that will be happening next week uh, to see if you know we can accommodate uh, uh, both um, sides around that. So the technical team in ESCOM has been briefed. Uh, they've reached out to the industry and next week we'll be meeting to try and finalize that. Yeah, it is something we it, are willing to look at. That. Good, because it certainly, it certainly does seem that there are a lot of grievances. And I mean, I know you haven't thrown a number at me, but it does sound like a, it is going to cost, especially smaller entities, a lot of money. And then all you're going to see is the big players still getting you know, the business and the little ones having to fall away because they certainly can't afford and can get all of this information to you without knowing that they're actually going to be repaid and get themselves into debt and probably you know lose business share which is a big problem even um i'm just going to say political politically the da say they're going to go to nursa that's the national energy regulator of south africa to review and set aside these proposed regulations um ha have you have you heard sort of about this because they also expressing the same concern that this monopoly leveraging a monopoly to create barriers to entry for uh, different energy makers yeah 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 so we have not had anything from that or any formal contact from that and we'll uh, certainly await for that before we can comment further on that mm. um we have a good experience and basis as to why we've put this as as i've indicated to you and the facts that they're out in the industry not having these minimum requirements in place uh, results in us as an economy and as a country not getting additional capacity that we need uh, on the grid as soon as possible and this we believe that um, uh, is not onerous at all it is something that we need to ensure that we can translate that uh, um, well, sorry. One would hope, because I mean, I'm reading from a City Press article that came out this, this last weekend where they are reporting, and this was not from this weekend, this was a while ago, they were saying that 23 planned wind power projects in the Eastern Cape um, are at a standstill. This is in the Eastern Cape, the Western Cape, and the Northern Cape. They're at a standstill because they cannot be connected to the power grid. So this is an example of what happens when you know, they don't get the grid space, and investors had spent a hundred million rand on these projects and they're not being used. South Africa needs the energy, it's sitting there, they don't have uh, space on the grid. So, you know, this is, it, it feels like we're going to see a lot more of these, uh, these power producers that are going to invest the money and yet it just sits there as an ornament as opposed to something that can be used to try and solve the power crisis. Yeah, so to solve the great challenges uh, there is a comprehensive strategy that uh, that needs to be implemented um, um, and ESCOM is working on some of those proposals to ensure that um, from a great point of view we can you know increase the capacity and enhance the ability to connect more and more uh, players um, what you are talking to is uh, exactly currently what we are dealing with that uh, wh while you still have very limited uh, capacity that you can use to connect um, uh, the different uh, ipps you have to ensure that those that you then allocate that capacity to those people then they can come up onto the grid and connect mm -hmm. uh, we all know what happened with bit window 6 uh, uh, where we could not allocate uh, some of the preferred bidders in that bid window uh, because purely all the capacity that we had available uh, if we had followed the previous rule that we've had yeah. it would have been subscribed and that's what we are trying to prevent exactly precisely with these rules all right Vilapi, i'm going to have to leave it there Vilapian tuli speaking to us about escom's new grid connection rules he of course is escom's general manager of operations enablement